Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Democracy 4. Now that the US elections have more or less concluded and the dust has settled, I think, then I feel comfortable coming out of my hole and playing some more political simulators, so that's what we're going to do today. And it looks like the game has received quite a few patches since the last time I played. There's at least four new countries to play. That's kind of exciting, and probably some other changes as well, but I'm not familiar with all of them because I've been getting a little bit lazy in following the dev notes. So last time on the channel, we played as the United States of America, and we went with my classic liberal capitalist playthrough. It went pretty darn well. We got a filthy, stinking rich. This time around, we'll be playing as the United Kingdom, because I figure we can go from left to right. And normally what I would do is I would uh, go for the exact opposite of my previous playthrough, so conservative socialist. However, while I am still going to do that, I want to add in a little bit of a twist, a different focus, if you will. You see, I just started up this Kaiserreich campaign from Hearts of Iron 4 on my channel, right? And I was thinking to myself, Union of Britain, syndicalism. Huh, syndicalism is a subset of socialism. Maybe we should play as Great Britain and go for a hardcore trade union playthrough and empower them as much as possible to turn the United Kingdom into the British syndicate. Now that sounds pretty darn fun to me. Now if you don't know what syndicalism is, that's understandable. It's not been a dominant economic philosophy for a, uh, oh, at least a while. It was more prominent in the early 1900s. It's still fairly popular with some young folks, but that's... Mostly it. Syndicalism is a subset of socialism, which of course is defined by the collective ownership of the means of production. In the case of syndicalism, it means that collect a collective ownership should be in the form of trade unions, workers organizing themselves to own their own businesses and industries, etc. And then uh, reorganize the government so it's really not focused on political parties or even really having a, uh, a uh, representative body that legislates the, uh, the people at all. Really, it's supposed to be more of an organization, an economic union of all the trade unions working together to decide upon policy. It's an extremely labor-focused ideology, and the general strike is the ultimate weapon of the people. So, trade unions are going to be my number one priority in this particular playthrough, and we'll see how that actually works out for us. We're going to name this, uh, oh gosh, let's see, I have to name my own thing, because I don't think there is a syndicate party, uh, kind of by default. We're just going to call this the syndicate. I think that's spelled correctly. We'll go against the, I don't know, the family values party and the, um, let's say, the national tech and technocrats party. Yeah, that all seems fine. Now, I'm not going to mess with the initial difficulty. I know some people would like me to go to maximum difficulty already, but to be honest, I don't have as much comfort in democracy as uh, as I have of late. It's kind of been a while, and I'm not familiar with all the changes in democracy for yet, so I'd like a little bit more practice before we go crazy. Welcome to your new job as Prime Minister. The lives of all 63 million citizens are now in your hands. Actually, the UK is not in the worst shape I've ever seen. Pretty decent GDP, health, and education have a bit of room to grow, but overall aren't the worst. Poverty is fairly low, crime is not too far off, and unemployment is probably the worst stat for us right now, but besides this, honestly, that doesn't look all that bad, so... Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and begin our term of office. Now, the first thing we're going to do, as usual, is reshuffle the cabinet. And who do I want to get rid of? Let's see. You are sympathetic with the poor and the liberals. You are uh, state employees. That kind of works. Actually, if we go for trade unions and state employees both, does that kind of focus heavily upon the idea that the government is comprised of the unions? Yeah, it kind of does, actually. I'm not opposed to that. But we don't like liberals, so we're not going to do that. Commuter and liberal, no. Trade union socialist, yep, we want to keep you around, so we'll go ahead. No, 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 no. Fire these three. There we go. Uh, let's see. Youth and liberal, nope. Uh, conservative socialist, yep. And poor socialist, maybe. Maybe we keep you around. Eh, but you only got 1.3. We're going to fire you anyway. All right, reshuffle the cabinet. Let's go ahead and find some more folks. Um... Of course, the primary... Wow, aren't you just delightful to look at. Um, <laughs> the uh, Obviously, the thing that we're looking for the most is something that's going to end up being sympathetic with my overall policies. Uh, let's see. Foreign policy. Do, 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 do. Foreign policy. So, let's see. Uh, religious and trade unionist. Mm, maybe. Religious can work for me. They tend to go hand in hand with conservative. So, we might end up going down some religious, though it's not going to be my top priority. Poor and liberal. Nope. Um, conservatives and commuter. Maybe. We'd have to do some very specific um, transportation policies, which I'm not a fan of. Liberal capitalist, parents, and motorist. Between all of these, I think I might end up going for the religious and the trade unionists. So we're going to shoot for that. Then we're going to go for welfare. Environmentalists, I almost always have to end up pleasing regardless of what I'm going for because this game is so penalizing on the environment. So maybe. Ethnic minorities, though? Probably not because they don't tend to go that great with the, uh, <laughs> the conservatives. 
Oh, yeah, that sucks. Uh, youth and poor, mm, maybe. Let's see. State employees, liberal. Well, I like the state, but beyond that, no. Poor liberal, environmentalist, liberal. State employees, liberal, capitalist. Goodness, there's just not a lot of options. All right, we're going to go for trade unionist and commuter. commuter. So it sounds like I am going to be going down some commuter regardless. We'll go ahead and pick you up. Then for the economy, this is obviously a very important one. Uh, let's see, poor and socialist, maybe. Commuter liberal, no. Do -do 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 -do. Conservatives, commuter, maybe. Pretty good at com campaigning, but to be honest, as long as I do my job well, I don't really feel like I need good campaigning advisors, because, I mean, just by virtue of merit, we should be getting reelected, right? That should be the idea. Um, I think poor and socialist could work. I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit sad with how low your current amount of capital is, but we'll try for that. Public services. Self-employed? No, we want state employees. Socialist and poor? You're a pretty good option. No, 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 no. So many liberals in the UK! Goodness gracious me, what is going on with all you people? Alright, so we're gonna go for socialist and poor. And then for transportation... Environmentalist, economic minorities, environmentalist parents, no, you're pretty terrible, youth liberal, poor liberal, commuter liberal, goodness gracious me, they're just everywhere, everyone's liberals, guys, every single one of them are liberals, gosh, what's a boy to do? <laughs> Apparently you're supposed to go for a liberal playthrough in the UK, goodness gracious, alright, well, out of the bunch, um, I don't think I'm gonna end up making ethnic minorities happy, you're probably good in the short term, we may have to fire you in the long term. I'm going to take the risk of the environmentalists and the parents here. Of this guy, though, there's a good chance he's going to become... You know what? No, we're actually going to go for her. I'm going to do my darndest not to peeve off the ethnic minorities any more than I have to. Though there's a good chance we're going to be losing some loyalty with her eventually. All right, so what's this over here? Obesity? Oh, no. We're getting fat in the UK? It's almost as if we're eating too many fish and chips. Do we have a general strike? No, we have an environmental protest. We have an uncompetitive economy. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fix that. Hospital overcrowding. Yep. Yeah, that would be a problem. We could fix that by lowering demand with just general health and wellness, but also by funding the state health care by a lot more. What's this? Executive term limit. We have term limits? Does the UK have term limits? I actually don't remember if that's a thing or not. Huh, maybe. Well, that's a thing that you probably want to have at least some term limits because it actually... Oh, no, we have none. Yeah, we are set to none. Okay. Well, we could actually improve our democratic rating if we were to have some term limits involved. But we're not going to worry about that right now. That's obviously not that important. Uh, so let's see. Obesity, respiratory disease, ghettos are an issue. We'll have to reduce our racial tension and maybe even reduce our immigration. Crime is a little bit too high at the moment. And we have an illegal immigration crisis, which appears to be very difficult to get rid of. What's involved in illegal immigration? Well, the GDP is high enough that it is attracting a lot of folks. Um, the problem, of course, with illegal immigration is, is depressing wages, is increasing unemployment, and racial tension, and so on. So most of this is actually bad. The only thing that could be good out of it is population. Everything else is terrible. You need to deal with illegal immigration one way or another. Could change up our refugee policy and try to reduce this a little bit. We would be considered less... Com uh, wait, no, more compassionate? Fleeing persecution? There'd be no checks. Oh, I see. Okay, so one way of dealing with illegal immigration is to actually make it no longer illegal. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so loosen up the refugee policy so that there's less people who are here illegally, but immigration does go up as a result. Interesting. Yes, okay. I guess it comes down to if you have no problems with uh, immigration in general, but you don't want the illegal immigration policy, you may need to deal with that. What are some of these icons? Oh, right, that was the refugee policy. Well, what do you know? Uh, let's see, we also got our immigration rules. Could try to tamp down on this a little bit. Um, yeah, again, open borders, increasing immigration overall, though. Goodness gracious me. All right, well, there's a lot of things I need to do. What's our deficit look like? It is currently about five billion pounds per quarter. That is a fair bit. Um, well, we could try to pass some new taxes and stuff. I don't have a whole lot that I can do on my first turn soon because we already spent most of my um, power just reshuffling the cabinet. But there are some things that we could do that would be beneficial. For example, if I were to pass some food stamps, this could become a very, very expensive policy, but would make a lot of people happy and improve our health overall. Let's see, tobacco awareness, try to reduce tobacco, alcohol, try to burn that down as well. You know, anything that increases our uh, natural wellness so that people don't need the hospital as much, and that way we don't have to spend much more on our state health care services. Trade councils, you know, probably pretty good. Um, business council, labor bank holiday, reduce GDP and make socialists happy. Yep. 
Don't want to do things like the business startup campaigns, though. That's not going to be a thing for us. So I'm curious, under economy, are there some things here that are obviously great? Government subsidies for unions. Yep, that is something we are definitely going to need to get. It will make capitalists very unhappy, but greatly increase the membership of trade unionists and socialist membership. And wages go up, so this will work out very well for me by uh, subsidizing the unions and making them more powerful. What else we got over here that could be useful, though? Um, quantitative easing? No, 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 no. State companies? Maybe. I mean, the thing is, they're very good at making socialists happy and increasing socialism. They're not so good in the sense that they tend to actually make um, the individual industry a little bit less effective, I think. Corruption goes up in this case. Energy industry suffers a little bit. Productivity actually goes up. This isn't the worst. Telecoms? Well, that doesn't seem too bad either. Internet speed goes up. Oh. Wait a minute. I thought we saw in the last playthrough that some of these state companies, like the state water company, exacerbated the water shortage. I might be wrong. Uh, let's see. Workers on boards. There's another policy that we're going to want that's going to upset the capital uh, capitalists quite a bit. But get me a lot more of that union uh, membership. The only downside to this is it actually does reduce the working week and productivity. And reducing the working week also reduces productivity both. So we'll have a happier population. We are going to take a massive dip in productivity if we go for this too early. So we'll have to wait on that a little bit. As far as taxes, you better believe I'm going to end up being fairly punitive against the rich and the uh, capitalists. We could try for things like the Enterprise Investment Scheme, but that reduces socialism, so it's not something I really want to do. Flat income tax, no. Fleet flyer, maybe. Boo, boo, boo. Are there anything else here? Punitive wealth tax, maybe. Yeah, I don't see a lot of good things there. What about public services? I'm looking for things that are specifically related to trade unions. I think it's just mostly a couple of those economic policies. But that's okay, we may even have a few more that are already passed that explain some of it. Um, cycling campaign, telecommuting, National Armed Forces, witness protection. We could reduce violent crime a fair bit and organized crime if we do this. And I think I will. It's going to cost me a bit, but we can reduce organized crime by a pretty good amount for a very cheap political capital cost. So we'll go ahead and try that. I'm also going to go ahead and implement a tobacco awareness campaign. We're going to try to reduce this as much as possible. Yeah, we're spending money. To be honest, though, I'm not as worried about debt. I think we're going to end up being fine on that front. Let's take a look at some of our other demographics over here. So right now, liberal is absolutely the dominant social policy. Well, we're going to have to change that somehow, aren't we? Yeah, that'll be great. Uh, let's see. Socialist could get a lot higher. Poor is a little bit high. It's good for me in the sense that the poor like me, and there's a lot of them, but it's bad in the sense that, you know, we don't want people to stay poor. There's not a lot of wealthy people in the uh, UK, apparently. That's interesting. Trade unionist membership, pretty bad, and they hate me. Fascinating. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. Debt protection law. Debt collection agencies have been in the news because of the aggressive methods they are using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. Uh, well, because I think that we are going to be protecting the poor and going with a socialist route, we are going to be limiting the agency activity, though I think this is going to reduce liberalism happiness a little bit as well. Let's see, socialist and poor happy, self-employed and capitalist. No, not liberal. Okay. Sometimes I don't know because, like, this game is a little bit interchangeable sometimes with liberal and capitalism. Liberalism meaning that people have freedom to do what they want, capitalism being the uh, private ownership of the means of production. I guess in this case, though, uh, we don't care that we are restricting a company's freedom to operate the way that they choose to. Instead, we're just upsetting the people who own those companies. Either way, though, this makes the socialists and hap uh, poor a lot happier with me. So I'm fine with that. Uh, do we have any serious intelligence issues? I don't think so. I think we're going to be mostly okay. All right, so let's see here. Under economy, the government subsidies for the unions. Now, the thing is, while that would be good in some ways, it's not going to improve the economy that much. Yes, it improves wages, but that's kind of it. It will help me secure victory in terms of elections, and I'll care more about that later. But right now, I would rather be trying to develop up the economy and actually get some meaningful money. Ban coal. One of these days, we may have to go for a hardcore environmentalist policy and damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. Don't care what it does to the economy. Uh, diverted profits? I don't know about that. Empty homes, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I want. What's currently dragging down on the GDP the most? It's mostly the uncompetitive economy, and the productivity is pretty bad for that. Um, actually, yeah, productivity could use a little bit more work. If we do that, we could improve it through wages. Higher wages might result in better productivity. 
Or maybe not. <laughs> what do I want to do? Sometimes I need to think about this a lot. You know, back in the old days of Democracy 3, I actually would play through the entire campaign and write down every single step that I was going to take, and that's why I was usually able to do some really good stuff. We should try to focus on getting rid of a few nasty things. I don't care about the environmental protests right now. That would be good, but it's not a huge deal. We should focus, of course, on getting rid of the violent crime. We would like to get rid of the ghettos. I would like to get rid of the hospital overcrowding because it's upsetting a lot of people, but it's not actually impacting the economy too much. What can we do to improve health? Right now, obesity is the largest drag on that. So if we were to go to, let's say, some new policies under welfare and, let's say, food stamps would improve health. Alcohol awareness, maybe. There are tax policies we could do as far as health food. We should try this. Let's go ahead and go for some pretty darn high health food subsidies. Now, that is going to reduce the cost of food, which means people are going to eat more, which is going to result in some issues, but, I mean, maybe it'll be better as a plant-based diet. We're going to try for some of that. And then we're going to go under tax, and we are going to do a junk food tax to offset some of the money that we lost. So we'll be able to get an income of a few hundred extra million pounds. Now, this is going to upset some folks. It's going to increase poverty a little bit and upset the children. But I'm okay with the, uh, increasing poverty a smidge. If it improves health by a lot, it ends up being better. And obesity is going to take a huge dump. So that is a big win as far as I am concerned. We should go for the fuel efficiency standards early, by the way. We know that this is extremely powerful as far as uh, reducing some of the CO2 demands. Um, this can be expensive, and it's going to upset a lot of people. It also... Oh, wait, no, this isn't the one that I want. What's what's the one that improves the environment like an absurd amount? I don't remember for sure. Well, reducing oil demand is good. Increasing car usage is not great. Um, but we're going to go for this anyway at maximum. We can always pull it back a little bit later if I want to. Where is the environment, out of curiosity? Uh, environment is right here. Environment is affected by the GDP being too high. Hybrid cars, pollution controls. Pollution controls are something we can certainly try to fix up. It would reduce the GDP a bit, but also our CO2 emissions. Not the top priority this second. Is there, is there a different policy that I'm not thinking of? Hang on, where is it? There's somewhere is a policy that's extremely good for reducing your uh, pollution and improving the environment, but I do not remember... Which one it is. Banning low mile per gallon cars can be helpful. Clean fuel subsidies can be helpful. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was the cars. I'll have to think about that a little bit more later. We only have two points left, though. What should we go for? Well, we should probably go ahead and try to reduce the alcohol consumption a little bit because I'm sure that has an impact on health as well. If we take a look at health right here. So obesity going down will be big. Our state health care services are costing me an absolute fortune. And private healthcare is non-existent as a result, and I really do want this to be maxed out, basically, in order to just get rid of private healthcare entirely, but, 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 um, it's just extremely expensive. So we may have to pull that back a little bit later. I also could really benefit from some new taxes, but we'll see. So the GDP is starting to go down and unemployment going up. We need to figure out how to fix this a little bit. School sponsorship. A number of large corporations have expressed an interest in investing in our school system. Everything from free school books to entire sports centers is offered in return for some branding and promotional opportunities. Uh, well, as fun as that sounds, our schools are places for kids to be educated not to be brainwashed into buying this or that brand of cola. Advertising is everywhere in society, and schools are one of the last places we can escape from it. Keep big business out of education, and we are going to do that. Liberals and socialists like that. That doesn't seem to have hurt me, like, in any meaningful way. Oh, wow, okay. Situation intimate. We are about to head toward a gig economy. Oh, that's no good. Um, well, hmm. What, what affects that? Uh... Does, does focusing a bit more on pro... We have to go hard on the pro-union, don't we? Focusing a bit more on pro-union stuff, does that help? Might. Um, we can try to go a little bit higher on this. Spend eight political capital to improve this. Remember, you have thresholds. So we can spend eight now. And then later we can spend another eight if we so desire. So this would allow me to reduce the working week and make the people I want a little bit happier and start improving some demographics we care about and improve wages. We're going to go ahead and make some incremental change there. That seems fine. What is currently driving unemployment the most? Let's see. Uh, unemployment benefits are a little bit. So retirement age is a little too high. Industrial automation and immigration. So immigration is a serious issue is what I'm hearing. So we may need to go ahead and try for a bit more. We can reduce illegal immigration by just going up a step right here. We can also reduce tourism and so on. But that only fixes illegal immigration. 
Which is good, don't get me wrong. We do need to do that. Um, but is that the high priority? Let's see. Immigration, is this the policy right here? Yes, immigration is currently being mostly driven by refugees, GDP, and the English language is an innate benefit. It's actually such a widely spoken language that immigration is uh, more likely to happen into the UK. Fascinating. Immigration rules. We could try to reduce this a little bit, or with job offer... Let's see, if we go down here, illegal immigration actually will go up. But immigration itself will go down significantly. Now, this does upset other foreign countries, so too much of this is a danger. Um, that said, I really do need to reduce immigration a little bit. It's too high, and it's depressing wages and taking value away from the unions. So we're going to spend three points, I think, to reduce this just a bit for now. Okay. Uh, anything else I could do? Well, food stamps are expensive is the only problem, but they're really good in this game. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What else can I do to possibly bring down the immigration? Uh, racial tension is high enough that people don't want to get here anyway. Ghettos are actually reducing immigration because they're bad. Hmm. <laughs> There's not a lot that I can do here that would actually make a big benefit, I think. Um... Yeah, no, there's not a whole lot we can do. What about industrial automation? Is this too high? Automation? Sorry. Um, well, the more... It's actually upsetting unions. We probably want to smash up the rota robots. We'll be a bunch of Luddites. Don't you worry. It'll be fine. I don't know. Healthy eating, I think we will do, which to, can improve health and reduce obesity. I am committing hard to trying to punch down on this obesity epidemic. And what I'm seeing here is between once the junk food tax and the health food tax takes full effect, in addition to the healthy eating campaign I'm doing right now, I think this should be enough to greatly reduce the current amount of obesity we are looking at. And once obesity goes down and overall health goes up, I think healthcare demand should start to drop a little bit, which will be good for me. So, yeah, that, that, that might start to solve itself a little bit. Illegal immigration crisis, though. What am I going to do about you? Could start spending some more money on foreign aid. Um, tends to make foreign relations go up, but it's already reasonably high. Military is not that great, apparently. We could improve unemployment a little bit if we focus more on this. Hmm. <laughs> is there any tax that we can raise for a very small amount of political capital? Usually not. Oh, I'll take that back. We actually could improve the payroll tax a little bit. Depresses wages a smidge in the GDP, but you can see I actually would gain a few million more pounds. Sorry, a few billion more pounds. Um, the only downside of this is it does increase the in uncompetitive economy, but not by a lot. But I don't like depressing wages. Are there any other opportunities that we could find? A petrol tax is a good option, but no. Inheritance tax, no. Corporation tax, no. Alcohol tax, we could increase a little bit, but it wouldn't amount to much. Yeah, I don't know about any of that. Um, hmm. <laughs> Cyberbullying awareness. Carpooling. Telecommuting. Trade unions like this. Commuter membership goes down. Car usage goes down. I really don't know what I want to do. I really want to improve productivity. I think that's the biggest thing. Maternity leave is apparently high enough that it's actually reducing productivity by a lot. Which is not great. We could reduce it a little bit, but that's not going to make a sweeping change. Maybe we hold on to the points, we move on to the next turn, and we see what we can get. Okay. Disputed territory repatriated after an international court ruling. A significant territory that ha we have historically claimed sovereignty over has been repatriated. Its current occupiers have always disputed our claim, but have no choice but to vacate or transfer ownership of the area. We get 20% increase in patriots. And a major donor has abandoned the party, making me seem weak. Alright, well, that's probably fine. Um, okay, so the polls do not look good. I don't really care too much. That's fine. We need to boost the economy. Badly. What would be the best choice for me on that? Well, the Rural Development Grants might do that. It reduces unemployment by a lot. Basically, we just start spending lots of money to start developing the infrastructure of the outside areas. GDP would go up by a pretty good amount uh, over time. Farmers are thrilled. Uh, quality goes up. Unemployment drops by a lot. Poor earnings go up. Farmer membership, I don't like. Too many farmers actually becomes a problem, but... 
we start seeing more cars and rails being used too. I think this may be worth it. The big GDP boost is huge, equality going up is good for me, and also unemployment dropping is going to be big. And we're looking for ways to just drop the unemployment a bit. So that works for me. Uh, let's see, I don't really want to do robotics research grants because I want to reduce automation. What about a new tax? An automation tax could do this. It would upset the capitalists by a lot and technology would go down. If technology goes down, we're actually no longer um, as competitive. Charity tax relief. Charity goes up. Wealthy are happy. Plastic bag tax. No, none of that works for me. None of that actually does what I want it to do. Um, the property tax could go up. Now, this reduces income of a lot of places. The generational wealth gap goes down, though, a little bit because... The older people who benefited from holding on to their property over a long period of time, which uh, is actually pricing out the young generation, I know from experience, uh, would go down a little bit. Let's see. This would result in a little bit of extra money for me. Capitalists don't like it. Middle income going down isn't great, but everything else here seems okay. Yeah, this seems like an acceptable way for me to generate a little bit of extra income and also get some uh, stuff going in the direction that I want. So yes, let's raise the property tax. And I am now out of political capital. Okay, so we're going to have to go ahead and end this video here. It's been our first year in office. We're going to be tackling that obesity pretty aggressively. We are going to be reducing unemployment quite a bit. I'm hoping we're going to see our state healthcare services figure themselves out a little bit. We need to figure out the uh, immigration crisis. We need to raise taxes so I can start taxing and spending like crazy. And of course, we need to focus more on building up our trade unions. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and you're looking forward to this series of Democracy 4. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. <laughs>